We are happy to inform that uh, Grand Prix Nine has completed and uh, is uh, ready for the release. And the releasing date is on November 25th. Uh, we are starting from India. Uh, one of us is distributing the movie in India, and uh, so our uh, Oscar screening has already the seven day Oscar uh, uh, promotion run has happened uh, here in LA, uh, and uh, hopefully we get some nomination or something. Yeah, then uh, the release in. Uh, Europe and the US will get delayed uh, and uh, we have some sp- uh, hope because already the script got into Oscar library and a uh, lot of hope is there because the city national award winners are there in the project and uh, uh, everyone they put their best effort because this is the, mo- the most prestigious project come out of India as you know India is supposed to be the world's largest film producing country and uh, for so far we made uh, thousands of movies but uh, unfortunately uh, we never uh, tried to enter the uh, rooms of Hollywood, but uh, this is, uh, in fact, uh, we have taken it as a prestige thing and uh, entire it because we have the people from uh, all the film industry in India, because India got the many uh, language, uh, regional language uh, uh, projects and we have taken uh, actors and the production crew from all these various sectors uh, um, and uh, we are lucky to have uh, Jumla Raman here from, uh, to represent uh, the Indian film industry because she has acted in five different languages and she was ex uh, Miss Asia Australia and uh, she got a lot of things to share with you uh, and uh, we have also uh, Frederick, uh, Joshua Frederick Smith uh, uh, he has taken one of the lead roles in that one and uh, Jala is here and uh, our casting director who is here our uh, co-producer Prabhupada is here and uh, our CEO and marketing director Shankar is also here. Lucky to have the Middle East release also. It is Middle East release is uh, rank for 24. And uh, Singapore uh, we have the show stars on 26. Uh, and uh, I would like to uh, uh, request uh, Mr. Joshua to uh, share this experience uh, during the show. Oh, okay, put me on the spot, alright. <laughs> um, well, first off, I'm really happy that Damon and I done. I think I'm speaking for everybody at this panel. Um, it was amazing. It was a really amazing experience getting to go to live in India and, and Dubai for a while, getting to shoot on an oil tanker. Uh, I believe that you guys didn't get to experience the oil tanker. Well, we got to experience the oil tanker. Um, it was just amazing, really, just an out of, out of this world experience. And hopefully, I'll get to go back and make more movies with these guys. It was great. Uh, what was your experience? Because you are, you are the right person to come and join Sunny. You acted in almost all the regional languages in uh, India. So you have experienced the various ways of uh, movie making and you can just share with us. Well, firstly, um, I feel very privileged to be part of this film, Dan Triple Nine. I think congratulations to everybody because it is an achievement. Um, I don't think Indian cinema like Sohan says that it has reached out to Hollywood, that to in 3D, it is a big effort and to be coming from um, without a backing up, without a background, it is very difficult and I appreciate the efforts made by everybody um, behind Dan Triple Nine. The experience for me, I have done all the regional, main regional languages in India, I've done about 20, 21 films and for, for sure this has been a one-time experience, um, firstly to be doing an English film, a Hollywood film and um, working with a team of actors that have come across the world from Hollywood, from um, Bollywood, from India. So it has been a, a learning experience, a one-time experience. And um, I think the amount of effort that was put in by the creator of the project, so and so his dreams and his hard work, I think it definitely paid off. And we just hope that the um, world appreciates the film. It is a big effort. And the film also carries a social message, it carries a global message. I think that's also a different approach that Indian cinema hasn't really touched as yet. So it was an excellent experience acting with um, you guys and working in a totally different type of atmosphere. It was very different for me and I think um, it's an experience that I'll definitely take back and I hope to do more in the international market and the global market. And let's hope the best. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, uh, one more happy uh, mentioning that uh, we had uh, also made a documentary, a contemporary documentary about the real uh, story behind this movie uh, that is about the possible dam disaster, the biggest possible dam disaster in the world uh, that may happen any time in India. It's about the Mulabiya Dam and uh, this uh, entire story was developed out of this incident. 
And that document has already won 20 international awards. Well, this is my first film, so I'm very grateful of the opportunity that was given to me by Sonora and um, Business TV <coughs> Network. Um, it was a learning experience for me, and it was an amazing experience to get to travel to India and um, and work with all these great veterans of film, um, such as Vimala and Vinay and Rajiv Kapoor, and all of them. I mean, it was an absolute honor. Um, I've now got a fear of snakes. <laughs> from the film, which you'll see when you watch it. But um, no, I, I'm really, really happy to work with everyone, and I think it's a great project, um, as well as a social message. It's, you know, it's something that's never really been done before. I mean, from East meets West, it's just different cultures, and to join them in together in this film, um, filmed in India about Indian culture, but marketed to a Western audience, um, I really hope it does well because I think it's a fantastic, fantastic project. Yeah, uh, one more thing is the what are graphics that we have used in this uh, movie book. As you know, the most difficult uh, graphics, uh, uh, graphics is water graphics. And even in Hollywood only, really very few companies can handle such kind of shows. And uh, this is a really a big achievement for the Indian film industry to have, uh, uh, to ha handle this kind of uh, very heavy uh, graphic shows, uh, water graphics. And uh, we have successfully, uh, the shorts have come up to our expectations and this will be uh, really a new door opening for the entire film industry. And I would like to ask Usma about her experience because she was also there in the shoot. So Usma, what was your experience? Well, um, Kerala was a culture shock. <laughs> um, I've been to India a number of times and spent a lot of time there, but Kerala is definitely something different. Um, I have never seen an outdoor bathroom in a hotel before, so that was pretty interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, no, the shoot was amazing. The heat is crazy out there, so I wasn't prepared for that, but the shoot was very, very fun, and, you know, we have a great cast, so I'm very happy with it. Yeah, one of the uh, uh, very particular thing I would like to have um, share is uh, we had a, uh, India has been the the biggest uh, uh, filmmaker in, in India, the Satyajit Ray. Uh, he was he is the man beyond the bad. Then. It was his dream to have a Bollywood movie in association with uh, to be produced in India, and he, he made the project in 1963. Uh, 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 with the uh, Columbia Pictures, uh, that project was planned, and uh, it was the movie name was called Alien. But unfortunately, uh, later he picked up the uh, he uh, tried to start the project by 1968. But unfortunately, that uh, project was shelved later because of various reasons. And it was uh, it was a big shock for Satyajit Ray, and it was clearly written uh, in his uh, biography. After that, uh, so many decades, nobody could uh, uh, step into uh, and complete his dream. But that is the main reason why, when we plan this project, the entire film industry, um, the, uh, the best people from the film industry, they came forward and uh, we all decided we should uh, make history and dream true. And uh, this is this Nam Triple Nine is a dream come true for the entire Indian film industry. And it's a, dedi uh, it's a real uh, dedication for uh, Satyajit Ray. Uh, dream because he is no more and such a great man's dream is going to happen through uh, the, uh, this venture and luckily uh, one of others uh, has also stepped into this project to uh, take up uh, uh, his vision. Thank you. And we can ask for our questions. What uh, inspired you to tell that story in particular and why you put it in 3D because it's not exactly popular at the time when you were making it. And uh, do, uh, do you have to put it in 2D and did you find it, uh, how do you make changes to fit in a 2D format? Yeah, actually uh, initially uh, we decided to have the 3D because whatever technology available in the industry we should utilize for this project because we are going to show something, uh, that, uh, uh, that, uh, something that may happen because the original story we started from the Mulapari Mulapari Dam is not a collapse but if it collapse what will happen? But, uh, uh, if, when we show this kind of things, if you give a 3D feeling, a feeling a 3D, uh, then naturally the people will get the real feel of uh, that damn disaster. So that is the very uh, particular reason for going for the 3D uh, version. But unfortunately, when we planned everything uh, with the CGS copy, we because we also decided we should go for the entire thing sound movie. So when we when we in the initial round of discussions. Uh, 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 we decided to go for digital 3D cameras because to, uh, normally the, the normal cameras will have a, in the film roll there will be a sound, okay. So we, we decided to go for 100% perfect 
things down and so that's why we decided for uh, double thread initially yeah. and we brought uh, uh, two cameras from Canada for a demonstration in India but unfortunately during the demonstration the camera did not uh, work out properly so we lost the confidence. So then uh, also there was another big issue because in the climax sequence and other things we had to use spy cameras at a time. So it was quite difficult because normally the stereoscopic camera the operating radius is more than 2.5 meters. So it, is, it was quite difficult to have five cameras that also so many shots, underwater shots are there. So it is quite difficult to have uh, a stereoscopic camera for this project. So uh, even if we start with stereoscopy, some portions we have to go for the conversion. So later we decided, okay, we will go for uh, 2D cameras. Uh, for that we use the IDSC, the absolute uh, noise, uh, noise uh, camera. Uh, with that, it's a very lightweight camera and that, because of that we could, uh, uh, got, uh, we managed to get so many beautiful shots on board, uh, the critical shots on board the ships. Mm -hmm. And uh, later, that's why actually uh, after our initial plan, this project was to be released six months before. So. But uh, it took so much time because of this conversion, 2D to 3D conversion. But uh, that also is a great achievement. This is the first movie from India, uh, it's a 2D to 3D conversion project from India. And uh, uh, actually 2D to 3D conversion is uh, not very old. Normally the Indian filmmaking and the Hollywood filmmaking, there is a big difference of minimum 25 years gap was there. But this, through this 2D to 3D conversion, we have almost uh, uh, reduced that gap to almost one year. So, so there's no native 3D capture in the, in the film at all? No, no, no. no. It's all, all, all it was captured in 2D, then converted, but a perfect conversion we have done. Proto we have done very perfectly. That's why it took so much time. Every frame we need to take and convert everything. Which and which company did the conversion? Uh, yeah, conversion was uh, uh, 3D Magna in. Uh, 3D Magna. Right, 3D. Right, 3D Magna. Can I ask the actors what is it like to work with uh, the Tower Tower? Uh, like because you are talking about two different cultures, right? You are from Australia? Yes, yes. Australia. Australia. And then you are based in... I'm here from America. Oh, San Francisco. San Francisco. And you are... I'm English, I'm based. Uh, so the script, we have to look for some ancient pages also. But uh, we have national awareness like Ashish Vidyarthi, Rajat Kapoor, uh, many people are there. And also in the technical division, we have all the national awareness. But uh, the thing is to, to handle the particular role of uh, you will have asked question just because of this thing sound movie, uh, the actors should speak uh, uh, English, something which can understand the world, okay. So since she is from Australia, she got a very uh, okay. uh, good accent. But the difficult part was that um, I had to make my, my Australian accent into an Indian accent. Oh. I am a very traditional girl, and so I had to downturn my accent and get certain words right yeah. with the Indian tone. So <laughs> that was difficult too. Yeah. But yeah. So she managed to, uh, so now we can experience the air voice in the movie. It has come out very well and uh, during our preliminary uh, screen, screening, the appreciation was very high. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, we are listening to your point of view. What about the actor's point of view? Yes. Tell yes. us, tell us. Oh, it was like it, it just working. <laughs> With her. Um, well. I'm going to be absolutely honest. The movie is done. You know? <laughs> No, no idea what to expect. I mean, once Uzma had called and confirmed that I was cast in the role six months after I auditioned, um, I wasn't sure what to expect. So I did all the research I could on some of the other principal actors in the film just to make sure I kind of like knew I was getting into. And Bollywood was so foreign to me. I, mean, I was just in Cambodia filming another movie six months prior to this one, and that was just a different experience. So I was kind of warmed up to it, like you were saying about the heat. Like just adjusting to the heat was one thing. So I was a little primed for it, but still. Um, getting there and then, you know, I remember the first day meeting so on on set, it was, it was great. I, like, I was, I'll be honest, I had anxiety, I was nervous, it was, what, 36 hours of traveling, and I got really sick, but, so did you. And, but, but, it was, I got greeted with the most warm smile, and I was like, okay, I, I can get through this. I, and then, I mean, our first scene was, you know, me carrying you and putting you on the, on the, um, in the wheelchair, and you know, I came back and he gave me notes and said, "I want this and that." I was like, "Okay, okay, good. I'm gonna get some direction here." And you just don't know what you're, you're going to expect. I mean, going from working in Los Angeles and working around America, then going into a foreign production such as Bollywood or India or a Tamil or a Hindi film, you just don't know what to expect. So now, when I come home and I talk about the experience and the direction and the collaboration, 
a lot of people are like awestruck because they're like, whoa, you were working in a Bollywood movie in India? And it's like, no, it's normal. It's second nature now. Because like, I get it. We've lived the experience. And Josh, you dance with people right? don't. Dance with right? Oh, yeah. yeah. And I unfortunately had to dance, too. Oh, I'm not I'm, no, no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. No, no, no. no, no, no. no, no. It, was, it was kind of hard, you know. Because in this movie, nobody, everybody's like, oh, it's the dance numbers. And what is so creative is instead of creating actual, like, orchestrated dance numbers, you have... Uh, an Indian Bollywood, like, I call this movie a hybrid. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a hybrid because it's, the songs don't come out like, like a conventional Bollywood movie. You know, there's, not a, there's not a dance number in there. There's actually songs, but it's placed through montages of different shots, which really kind of coincide with how the, 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 the I don't know how you would get the consistency of the movie. So it was really good, but just as an actor, I mean, it's, it was great. It was a really good experience. And when, I, when I was doing things that needed adjustments, he would give me the adjustments. Uh, if you liked what I was doing, you just say, keep, yeah. keep doing more of what you're doing. It was, it was a really good experience. Uh, it was a bit of a taskmaster. I'm oh. the, um, I think I got the grant of it. I think, firstly, because I've um, worked with many directors in India, I've worked with many of the very um, experienced directors who've done 100 movies or so, and I've worked with newcomer directors as well. So for me, I was really not knowing what I was expecting. And then I realized that film didn't really have um, a directional experience beforehand, so I was like, okay, let's see how this is going to go. First day I went there, we had a presentation, he had a presentation to everyone, and that really impressed me, because I realized he knew what he wanted, mm-hmm. and he had his script there, he had his uh, binded script there, he had his, um, he had the mood, the emotions he wanted out of each character, as I think you're aware, we're running by this, um, Navaratsa Baba, which is the nine emotions that the people have. have. So each nine characters, there's nine main characters in the film, each character carries on a specific expression or a mood all throughout the film and wear costumes according to that mood like my mood was compassion so I'm wearing grey all throughout the film and your and white. happiness and Lapsed pride and all yeah. that, there's all these like little things that I don't think I've noticed um, I, in my experience I've never seen a director taking so much detail and going mm-hmm. into it so I know that this um, director knew what he was talking about he wants something and he's got a big aim and He's a fighter and he is a taskmaster. I think, <laughs> I, think um, I shot the most hours <laughs> in one day. I think, um, yeah, he's a bit of a drill master and got what he wanted. Mm-hmm. And he wouldn't rest until he got what he wanted. So right. I think he's, um, that way I think he's really motivated and he knows what he's doing. <laughs> like, but any many days she had to work 18 hours. 18 hour days. Oh. By the end of the morning, by like the start of the morning, and we'd be going on till the next morning, and by the end of that, I was like, oh, what was the day? <laughs> <laughs> One more shot, and then you can go to sleep. I was like, please. <laughs> but I mean, all the hard work was worth it at the end of the day when you see the end product on screen. I think mm-hmm. all the toil and trouble was worth it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. The budget was so, the budget was fifteen million. No, it? ten million. Ten. We would we initially we planned for fifteen million, but uh, since. Uh, we got the support from uh, everywhere. It was maritime industry supported us. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, Ramu Film City supported us like anything. It was the world's largest film studio is in India. Mm-hmm. The site was Ramu Film City, and this is their first prestigious project, international project. So they gave us all the facilities. So uh, otherwise, without their facilities, if we were uh, doing the same thing in here. Some of the studios, the budget would have been many folds. Okay, and uh, that is a great thing and uh, now a lot of encouragement Ramaji is getting for many international projects. It was, it was really underutilized, the, the facilities. Where, where does the budget come from, 10 million? No, this is our in-house. This TV network is the... You just wrote a check for 10 million. Yeah, this is our in-house. It was the, it was the first uh, only television channel for the uh, entire shipping industry. So it's fully yeah, fully in house. Even our second movie also fully in house. We have with this experience, we have gone to the second uh, project. That is, uh, uh, we decided second movie should be in stereoscopic uh, uh, camera. So second movie we did it in UK. That is same background. Yeah. Uh, that is, that is also completed. Yesterday we had a screening here. And uh, the, the greatest part of this movie is even in the Oscar we are trying for the uh, musical category because music is the most important thing in this movie. This is a voyage to the 5,000 years of the music in the world. And uh, because he, uh, I don't know whether how many people know that uh, the, the origin of the music, the uh, uh, actual, uh, the uh, what is classic music started from India. That is 5,000 years back uh, we had Veda Mandras. So the movie itself is starting with, from the Shanti Mandra. Shanti Mandra is one of the Veda Mandras. 
So it was uh, 5,000 years in uh, whichever raga it was composed, the same thing nowadays also we are using, we are stating in the same uh, way. So this is a, uh, this is a research, research work by Mr. Rausser Pajan, he is a national award winner. He took almost one year to develop this music. There are nine songs in the, in the movie. So all these songs were, uh, uh, it's a voyage from the 5000 years back, the Vedavad are starting, then it is going through different uh, styles of music in India, uh, originated from India, uh, through the vessels, and it is ending into the modern rap. Okay, because nowadays the, more, the younger generation they are into rap. So the, even the rap music also is there. So what will happen in India in the last 5000 years? That music journey we are showing through this music. How long have you planned for this particular project before you approach the guy with the check? No, actually, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> the entire project is for four years. Uh, four years. Four years. Uh, yeah, from the scratch. But uh, the shoot we started in 2010 March first. We started the shoot. We had 91 days of shoot, uh, and uh, post production took more than one year. That was the the longest. Uh, another thing is that we are going to get a Guinness entry for the biggest floating object ever shown in any movies. It's a 330,000 tanner tanker. Uh, That's amazing. Yeah. Put it on by two weeks, majority of most, most of the It is the most expensive part also. Uh, we had to spend almost more than $4 million to get that uh, shots done. I have, I have a question for Bimura. Like, all the movies, uh, we have been, I have been a big fan of yours. All the movies you have seen, you have dance numbers, all the, all the leading stars. But here, you are in a closed door, lots of emotion, tears falling your lungs. <laughs> How was it actually? I think for me it was a good experience cause, because, as I said before, I was born and brought up in Australia. So I have a very Western background, at the same time an Eastern um, native being Indian. So acting in Indian cinema and doing the commercial Bollywood movies of dancing around the trees and yeah. uh, romantic numbers with the heroes was a fun experience. But at the same time, I also, you know, there's a level of maturity that I got to show in this film through my performance because it was more about the expression, like you said, it was more about the actual pure acting and not really the commercial side of things. So for me, it was fun to do something like this.